Welcome back to Biohacker Summit live show. My name is Valerie and I have Fabian Felsch from Brain Effect here uh, who came to Finland all the way from Germany this morning actually. This How are morning. you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling well. I just had an amazing speech here. Thanks Valerie. And um, yeah, it was, was a pleasure. A little bit tired, yeah, because I actually woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's <laughs> understandable. But yeah, it's such a great event here. So many cool people, so much energy. Really love it. Really yes. love it. I know this is not your first time at the Biohacker Summit and there is some really beautiful story behind. Yeah, you. that's actually true. So. Um, yeah, I actually um, had a date, I think, two years ago with my girlfriend uh, on a biohacking summit on conference. And yeah, and now uh, two years later, um, I just actually became a dad. So my little daughter was born three weeks ago. So um, yeah, biohacking can also produce children and bring people together. Such an amazing story. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, let's then talk about biohacking for parents. Uh, I know you focus a lot on the microdosing and... Uh, You've been talking a lot about it during the keynote. So what can parents do to, you know, become better parents using some of these techniques you were covering in the yeah, keynote? Today. Yeah, today at the keynote I was actually speaking about biohacking in general, microdosing especially. And I think uh, for me microdosing is a great way to actually use the power of some substances but without, you know, the negative side effect or by reducing the side mm -hmm. effects also. So it's every kind of a trade-off between on the one side the beneficial elements and the negative elements right. that you want to manage. And so uh, when we're talking about microdosing, what is it exactly like? How do we define that micro part? Yeah, that's a really good question. Unfortunately, it's different from substance to substance. Certainly. Yeah? So at some point, um, there are actually researchers telling us, okay, it's uh, below a certain threshold where you don't have, for example, looking at illegal substances, a psychedelic effect, mm. but you're still having the positive nootropic effect, for example, right. looking at mushrooms. On the other side, you can sometimes say that it's yeah, differentiating between every different uh, substance in terms of the addiction potential mm -hmm. and the positive nootropic potential. Mm -hmm. So it's different. But in general, it's about uh, maximizing the positive results, the positive effect, and reducing the negative side the effects. Side and I effect. think that's also really important. And to come back to your question in terms of um, yeah, being a dad or being a mum, mm. I think microdosing can help us there because microdosing is not, you know, I'm going full in with the substance, yeah, mm -hmm. with all the negative effects. You rather try to find your own microdosing journey, your own way, your best possible doses for something. And especially as a dad, yeah, or as a mum with a young child, you have got sleeping problems because, you know, you just don't get any sleep at during the night. Right. And therefore, using, for example, um, the power of melatonin microdosing mm -hmm. during tonight to improve the quality of your sleep is a really an easy lever in order to feel much better because, and you know, at the end you don't get as much sleep, so you should really look at the quality. Yeah, so what does that mean in practice? How do we microdose with melatonin? Yeah, I think with microdosing, with melatonin, the main problem is that 95% of all supplements out there are heavily overdosed. So it's the three, five, 20, even 30 milligrams melatonin normally get at over the counter product. Right. And um, there's a nice study from the MIT, a meta study actually, showing that the small dosage from 0 0.3 to 1 milligram are the ones which are really working, mm. uh, which is showing the best effect in terms of um, reduction to time to fall asleep, but also sleeping quality. And therefore, you should use those. Yeah? You should use a small amount. Maybe we, for example, developed a spray at Brain Effect, yeah? right. which has got one spray, a mouse spray, mm. only 0 0.1 two, five milligrams of coffee in it. So mm -hmm. you're starting with one or two sprays, yeah? And you microdose yourself to the best sleep and the best quality of sleep. Right. Is that microdose different for every human being? How do we define our personal perfect yes. dose? Yeah, that's a really important part. And I spoke in my keynote about it. That is the, the, the uh, part with caffeine, for example. Because mm -hmm. all of us, everyone has got a different um, ability to metabolize caffeine. And therefore, it's based on your weight, for example, your genetic wise uh, fast or low, um, small uh, caffeine melatonin, so that's the end, the idea behind it. 
So you should, and that's the good thing with biohacking, with microdosing, you have to test it. You, right. have, you have to feel like what's the effect of the substance. And that's also the good thing about microdosing, because at the end you're not going all in with the substance, you rather using the small amounts and taking one step after each other, which is safer and better for you. So just enough to get to the... To a certain effect. To certain effect. Yeah, and normally yeah. you're starting even smaller, so you might not feel anything if you just have a little caffeine doses, or melatonin mm -hmm. dose, or nicotine gums, I spoke about nicotine mm -hmm. gums. You might not just feel something if you take the first time, but then you're improving it and becoming, uh, let's say, from one milligram to two milligram, and then you're feeling the mm. effect without mm. the negative side effects. Yeah. It's about testing out, it's about trying, and that's the cool thing about it. Yeah. It's about, at the end, like starting your own journey. Yeah. Also, the great part of it, I think, is that you don't need to introduce that really big change in your lifestyle because, well, many of us drink coffee pretty much every day. Many people smoke as well, many people take melatonin. It's just really finding the right kind of dose. So basically you don't even need to change your lifestyle in a big way, but just finding that optimal amount that you need. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. We, we were talking about, we mentioned, uh, mentioned the nicotine, coffee, melatonin. What else? What are the other substances we yeah. should be benefiting yeah. from? In, in my actually keynote, I actually illustrate there are three different areas. Yep. One of them is concentration, and you spoke about coffee and nicotine. Mm. These are the legal ones. But then, of course, they are well discussed right now, the illegal ones, which are LSD and mushrooms, for example. Mm. Then you have got the second brackets, which is, from my perspective, the relaxation microdosing. Mm. So it's all about CBD, which is legal, yep. and THC, which is legal depending on the state and country you're living in. Mm. And then, in last but not least, you're having your sleeping, and this is mainly also a melatonin. So I think you have got these different legal options on the one side and the illegal options on the other side. But uh, in general, I think with all, you should look at the safety, really important. You should look at the Certainly. studies and you should really start with small amounts, whatever you're doing. Right. And I guess also looking at your personal goals, whether you want exactly. to have like a little boost of energy and be lean and smooth for the next couple of hours, or you really want to get that kind of kick, right? Like usually we have in the morning if we yeah. don't sleep enough uh, exactly. during the night. Exactly. It's with all the journeys we're starting. We should have a goal and objective to work through and then we know in which direction to go or what doses to take. Thank you very much. That Thank sounds much, really great. All right. Thank you.